Hey, what's going on? Thanks a lot for listening to this episode of the Billy Newman Photo Podcast. My name is Billy Newman. I'm a photographer and I'm based in Oregon. I'm working on a handful of things today. And most days I'm trying to go through and I kind of I kind of have this journal, right? And I go through that journal and I write out some of the stuff that I'm going to be doing that day. Some of the media stuff that I'm going to try and get up. I have a couple goals of like what photos I have to post or like what things I have to get to, what kind of work projects I have to work on. Oh, what everybody does in their day. But I'm trying to talk about sort of the process of the photos and how I do stuff, how I get stuff, what's interesting to me. And I try and do that every day, every other day, every three days, who knows, twice a week, something like that. Of uh, spending a couple of minutes and putting together a short podcast that updates on some of the stuff of everything I'm putting together. But this one's not bad. I think uh, it's like a mark, a demarcation of progress, which is cool. So I'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, but yeah. I appreciate anybody tuning in to uh, whatever's going on on BillyNewmanPhoto.com and, and if this feed is still working it through uh, whatever RSS setup I have. But I'm rebuilding the Billy Newman Photo page right now. I think it's actually kind of messed up right now. I'm trying to strip all the graphics out. I'm trying to strip a lot of unnecessary graphics. And then I'm, I'm really trying to focus in on, on building it a lot more cleanly and trying to be more directed and more useful without as many extraneous pieces that sort of pull out to different areas. But I think a big part of it, like I was talking about, is I'm really pushing out to YouTube, to Instagram, to Facebook. I'm really trying to focus on those places, I think, at least for this website. And I want a lot of content to kind of pull in from those places to the website. So I think I found a couple of ways to sort of work around that. There's a few plugins, like I've been doing some research on this plugin um, to do a grid layout, but it's going to pull the posts that I have from, from Facebook or from Instagram. It's going to pull those over in the text that comes with it. And it's going to show that like on, on my website, but it's going to pull it as, as native content in it, which I think would be really cool to do. And it would be a lot less maintenance than sort of the silly multiplied system of, of that that I have going on right now that sort of does the same thing. But like I talked about, I'm stripping down to just a handful of portfolio photos for a gallery. So I could like send the website to somebody, have them see it and say, oh yeah, okay. I see sort of the professional range of photos that this person is doing, or I see like uh, at least like some of the visual style that they have. So yeah, I get a, I get a taste of it, but it's not overwhelming and it's not like an endless feed. That's just sort of a duplication of like what I'm talking about for this other section of the site a duplication of my social content and like the feed of stuff that I'm trying to put out really quickly and regularly. So I want to spot this just specifically that portfolio. And I was looking at a couple gallery plugins that go into WordPress sites where you can set up an auto responsive image gallery that can show your pictures really nicely. You know, it's really impressive now in 2017, how they've really worked out a lot of the, the things to make mobile browsers really functional, like on the mobile phone, like between Android and Chrome, you know, and Safari uh, dominating, like as a browser across a lot of the platforms, you really notice that you can do a lot of things with the internet in a way more functional ability than you used to do in the past. And that's one thing that I think has a slight change for one second to say that the real development of the internet, as we know it, I think really comes from the browser or like how that browser is able to interpret or work with code or work with whatever it is. But if you try to run a lot of these websites on, on Explorer 1.0, it would never be able to render the type of complex things that are going on, even on simple web pages that we see now. So it seems like the biggest thing of the improvement of, of what we're able to do with the internet, what we have access to, or, or how, how we're able to build on top of it, the application, it seems to be a lot of how the browser works. I know that's kind of basic. And I know like the browser accepts a lot of things that have to be everywhere else and served on servers and how you know everything else works to it but on the consumer facing end of it it's interesting how important that is and so it's cool for our system of browsers that we have mobile phones that can get to websites that we can all build ourselves really easily like just drag and drop i'm just doing drag and drop i'm not i don't i don't have any skill to code i tried to learn html in, in high school one time so i can kind of scrape away with changing the color of something if i can figure out how to how to find that in uh the source code <laughs> but i can't i there's hardly anything i can do i'm just clicking on buttons and making gaps and sizes and stuff trying to keep things centered and have simple text simple colors simple stuff and then just a lot of the right photos and the right links out to the, the content where i'm active so i think that'll be the cool stuff to do but i'm really happy to build that website and uh i don't know it's good it's going to take like a handful of days so i'll probably talk about oh good lord the same thing again and again <laughs> be excited for that part the big news though the exciting part 
is that uh, today I've, I've been working for a while, right? I've been trying to sell the D3. I tried to sell all my Nikon gear. I got rid of the F4. I got rid of a lot of lenses. I got rid of the big telephoto, the 20. Yeah, I got, oh, it's all gone. But what I did is I turned all that into cash. And I have now finally received, I bought and now I have received an A7R that seems like it's in really good shape. So I've been pretty happy with uh, with buying used equipment like a couple years later. And this is probably the newest camera I've ever had. Last one was from 2007, the Nikon D3. I've moved up to a whole different kind of system, switching over from one gear system to another gear system. It's kind of a weird step. Like I've not, I've actually not done it before. I've always had, I've always had this Nikon stuff. Um, but switching over to Sony, it feels like a really good fit. I'm really happy with the way that I've been working with the A6000. So that gives me a lot of confidence about what I'll be able to do. And get this, it's it's like three times more resolution. And that's hardly the thing that I'm I'm even the, the top 20th most con concerned about. But it's three times the resolution of the 12 megapixel Nikon D3. This is like a 36 megapixel camera. I've never really even considered working with files that big before, like what you can do with that. But that opens up a lot of opportunities for what I'd hope to do with different landscape work, you know, have a couple good prime lenses. Okay. And this is the funny part, right? Is the goal is to get a couple good prime lenses to work with this, uh, this Sony a7R, try and put together a lot of landscape photographs, try and put together a lot of stuff that is just sort of that fine art level of, of work that I was really interested in a couple of years ago. And I've kind of been working on street process, film, outdoor photography, outdoor lifestyle photography for a while. But I want to get into like steady on the tripod, long exposures during magic hour, during blue hour, during dawn or dusk. I really want to get more into that because that's really where I found, I don't know, the most serenity in photography. And I think really a lot of my best work, I, I'm really proud of a lot of that stuff. And so I want to get into that a lot. I'm really excited to have some equipment that's going to be superior at it from what some of the stuff in the past that I had was. So that'd be really cool. But the downside right now is I'm super pumped. I just got the A7R body. It's in excellent shape. It looks really good. I'm happy to start using it. But then the thing is, though, what I, you know, realize, I mean, I'd realized before, too, is I don't have any glass. I have no Sony glass. I really have hardly any Nikon glass. I have just, I have just like one, I have the N80 and a 50 millimeter. And they kind of work, so they're really not worth, they're really not worth much right now. And I'm keeping that. That's the only camera I really have, other than the work camera that I can you know sneak off photos of. But this A7R, I have no glass. I have no Sony lenses at all. So the first one that I'm trying to get is the uh, 8518. It's like the $600 lens. The F1.4 that'd be awesome and stuff. But it's a pound heavier, and it's a thousand dollars more. Think about what that pound of glass is inside that canister. That's a thousand dollars. You kidding? I can't go there, but I'm reaching just to get to this $600 spot where I can get a solid prime lens uh, to get going. And then I want to get like a solid zoom lens around that, or maybe a couple other prime lenses. I think what I'm talking about at first is an 85, 1.8, and I'm trying to go with the, uh, the 28 millimeter F2. I think that was like a $500 lens. That is pretty interested in, but I would be really interested in having an 85 for good portraits and a 28 for wide angle landscape stuff. And 50 50, that's that's a lot of, I mean, you know, I had a 28 and I had a 50 millimeter for, uh, for the F4 and the D3, and then I had a zoom lens. You know, I've never really had a lot of glass. So if I get even two of those lenses, I'm halfway back to what my, my Canon or my Nikon setup was before. It'll be a long road for that. I don't know, maybe shorter. I have, I have other, there's like, a, you know, it's all spread around and stuff. So I'm going to try and get more lenses and stuff, but who cares? I got the a7  